Blue bringing you the best in New York Giants Sports Talk Entertainment. Oh, those seasonal allergies are back, man. It's these wacky weather changes. <clears throat> Excuse me, we were 50 degrees, 40 degrees the other day. Now we're 60 degrees, and it's just it's just freaking killing me. Oh, I'm also dying because it has nothing to do with the election. The freaking new Xbox is coming out now on Wednesday of next week, and I ordered mine from Microsoft, so it will be here Wednesday. Uh, I'm not a big gamer. I'm, I'm a big, uh, well, I, you know, I would say I'm not a big gamer. No, I'm not a big gamer. I don't watch TV. I watch movies, and I like playing, like, sport video games. So I, got, I go all the way back to the Sega Genesis and Nintendo and all that before that. So it's exciting to me that the new system's coming out. And you know, like I, said, I still play like some of the old Madden games. I think I was playing 14 the other day. And I don't understand to this day why the gang tackling has regressed from the next generation console. But we're not even going to get into that. We are going to get into a topic, and it's a touchy topic with everyone. That topic is Daniel Jones. I think it was Bad Dog that said to me, or put a quote that, uh, or comment that, um, you know, you have to be careful when you speak about Daniel Jones because you're going to have half the giant community that's going to love you and the other half is going to viciously attack you. And my thing about Daniel Jones right now is the Giants as an organization need to be careful that we do not fall into a franchise killing move with Daniel Jones. And what I mean by that is we, you know what, it's, it was, um, Bill Parcells has two quotes that I really love. And um, I, was, I was thinking about them the other day. And one of them is, confidence is born out of one thing, demonstrated ability. It is not born out of anything else. You cannot dream up confidence. You cannot fabricate it. You cannot wish it. You have to accomplish it. And honestly, Daniel Jones has not been accomplishing that on the field. Another Parcells quote, which I love, is you lose with potential, you win with performance. So everyone sits there and tells me, well, Daniel Jones has all the potential in the world and all this, but he's not performing. And like anything else, what Bill Parcells says, you you lose with potential, but you win with performance. And that's the problem with Daniel Jones. Does There's two faults. Does he have the potential to be a high caliber starting NFL quarterback? And can he reach that potential with the New York Giants? And here's the problem. You look at his career going back to Duke. He did not have a, prolif- a prolific career at Duke being in the ACC. He didn't. He barely cracked 60% of his passes. Hell, T- I think Tim Tebow threw for over 70% of his passes in college. <laughs> so that should tell you something right there. So it is not Daniel Jones's fault that the Giants took him sixth overall. You can't blame him for that. You really can't. I had Daniel Jones rated maybe as a second-round talent with potential to be a good NFL starter. Not an elite, but a good NFL starter. So I do not blame Daniel Jones for being taken where he was. That is the fault of the Giants organization. And I've said this a million times before. I don't disagree with the Giants taking him at six for this reason alone. It goes back to the whole Ernie Corsi situation going back to John Elway and even going back to George Young. You take your quarterback when you think you can get him. So if George Young took Phil Simms in 79 coming out of Moorhead State and everyone was like, you know, who the hell is Phil Simms? And Phil Simms did not have any type of career passing-wise in Moorhead State. There was a rumor that uh, Bill Parcells was – not Bill Parcells. Uh, Bill Walsh was going to take him later in the draft. Instead, he had to select that guy at a Notre Dame, Joe no, uh, Montana or something. I don't know his name. But, you know, and so – but he – that was George Young's quarterback. So he went and got him. Same thing Ernie Acorsi. Ernie Acorsi learned going back in Baltimore when he had to trade away the John Elway pick that when you see your franchise quarterback, you do what you need to do to get him, which is why he traded to the Chargers for Eli Manning. So Dave Gettleman, in that situation, thinks Daniel Jones is his quarterback, so he reaches for him at six. I didn't like the move. I said I understood the move. I wanted Josh on the defensive end. But this is what we have to live with right now. We have to live with the potential that we saw in 2019 with Daniel Jones. That potential has not translated into 2020. And the first excuses were, well, he didn't have a training camp. And it's a new coach in a new system. I, I, I give you that. But I give you that for like the first two, three games. I don't give you that from beyond week three. And his performance has really, 
if you want to be all honest, cost us the games. You can't, you know, one, you know, one turnover is, is one turnover too many when you have a talent like we have with the Giants. We have some talent, but we do not have enough talent to overcome mistakes and overcome multiple, mista- multiple mistakes from our quarterback. And that, is, and that is an issue. And he keeps turning the ball over repeatedly. I said four weeks ago, we need to bench Daniel Jones. Give him a game to sit, think, and watch. And everyone's like, you're crazy, you're crazy, man, you're crazy. Now, four weeks later, I'm seeing in major newspapers and on social media, we need to bench Daniel Jones. Well, I was saying that because of the fact that I did not want to be 1-7 and seven and have to bench Daniel Jones because we can't now. We cannot bench Daniel Jones now. We need to see what he can do these final eight games. And like I said before, we have to avoid the franchise-killing move with Daniel Jones right now. And that franchise killing move is we need to make a determination in year two if Daniel Jones is our is our quarterback going into year three. That's the issue. We cannot go into year three not knowing if Daniel Jones is our guy. We we truly can't because of the fact if we do and it turns out he's not, it's going to set the franchise back another five years. Because unless we draft a quarterback in the first round next year and let Daniel Jones play, we're going to have to wait till 2022 to find his replacement. And we're trying to build an offensive line. We're trying to build a defense. We do have to upgrade our skill players. We're hoping that Saquon Barkley comes back. Now, if anyone thinks that Saquon Barkley is getting a contract extension in year four, they're nuts. They're going to let him play out his fifth-year option, and they may potentially franchise tag him because the guy's got to stay healthy. But we need to know now in these next eight games, is Daniel Jones the franchise quarterback of the New York Giants? We need to make that assessment. Because honestly, if we get this wrong and we think he is and he isn't, it will set us back. Unless by the grace of God, we find a, a quarterback just you know, maybe maybe Aaron Rodgers gives us two, three more years in New York since he wants out of Green Bay because he sees the potential of the Giants. But we can't sit there and build an offensive line and build a defense to then have Daniel Jones cost us this game. We should be four and four, and I think we need to be honest and look in the mirror. And look at that. We should be four and four. I personally do not see, and I. I have never been a Daniel Jones hater, and I am definitely not a Daniel Jones apologist. But if you look at it from an outside perspective, he has average arm strength at best. He lacks the decision-making ability right now of a starting NFL quarterback. He still locks onto his primary receivers. He's not looking guys off. He's missing guys with the deep pass. I mean, he's not seeing the field. And people can complain about what Golden Tate said all they want, but Golden Tate is right. And I think there's a kind of a double standard right now with Joe Judge. I mean, Joe Judge punished Golden Tate for being upset for not being a focal part of the offense. But we have no idea what he did with Daniel Jones, Saquon Barkley, Sterling Shepard when they broke COVID protocol. It was handled internally. But he went pretty external with Golden Tate. So uh, to me, you're, you're creating the two-tier system. You're a young guy who's going to make mistakes, or you're the grizzly veteran who we're just going to get rid of. So, but, but like I said, we, as, we, we got off topic there for a minute. But like I said, as an organization, we need to figure out in these next eight games what we have in Daniel Jones. Because I don't think Judge is going anywhere, of course. I don't think Garrett's going anywhere. I think Garrett has actually become a pretty good is a pretty good offensive coordinator. He's he's playing towards his talent. And people are like, well, why doesn't he let Daniel Jones loose? Why doesn't he let him loose? Because Daniel Jones does not have the ability to be let loose at this point in time. So we need to stop with the benching of Daniel Jones, and we need to make sure that these eight weeks are an assessment period of Daniel Jones. Hell, the Cardinals knew they made a mistake. That's why they dumped Rosen and took Kyler Murray. 
Miami, after picking up Rosen and trading for him, knew they made a mistake, and they dumped him again. You know, it's okay. I mean, in some ways, Miami's doing the same thing right now with Tua. Miami's in a spot to make the playoffs, but they switch to Tua because they need to know what they have in Tua. They need to make sure that he is the guy for the franchise going forward because if they find out he's not, they have to replace him. You know, we sort of did the same thing with Eli Manning and Kurt Warner. We were five and four when we benched Warner. Now, Warner was playing terrible. He was playing, you know, he was not playing well. But we needed to get Eli on the field. Well, Jones has been on the field now for a season, more than a season and a half. He's beaten bad teams, and the only bad teams he's beaten is, is Washington in Tampa once, which, which is a fluke. Oh, and the, yeah. So, I mean, it's we. What Daniel Jones was at Duke is basically what he is right now. And it, is that going to be what we need to progress into 2021? I don't know. But like I said, the Giants need to figure out. Because this move, if they are wrong with this move, like I said, this will kill the franchise. This will kill the franchise. We will become the Jets. This will kill the franchise for the next five years. Because we are going to need to find a quarterback, we're going to need to cultivate a quarterback, and we're going to have to groom a quarterback. And Lord knows if we're going to get one this coming draft. So if Daniel Jones turns out to be a mistake, we need to cut bait and go. And go a different direction. Because, like I said, we... If we are thinking about this logically and statistically, we should at minimum be four and four right now, not one and seven. We are one and seven because of Daniel Jones. And I don't want to hear the Daniel Jones apologies. Well, he told us, well, did you see the pass he threw to, did you see the pass he threw to Deion Lewis? Did you see the patch, the catch that uh, Golden Tate made? You know, Golden Tate made a great catch. That wasn't a great throw. That was a great catch. The Deion Lewis was a good throw, but Golden Tate was the one that made that catch. And that's why I got no problem with Golden Tank going off. And Dante Pettis, man, Dante Pettis reminds me of Evan Ingram. And we'll do another video on that another day. But again, this is Tim with Online Big Blue bringing you the best in New York Giants sports talk entertainment. And as always, if you could like, if you could subscribe, if you could ring that bell, I think you know what it means. That'd be awesome.